Hi there. In Genesis 18, 10 to 15, the Lord tells Abraham that Sarah will have a son. Sarah laughs because she knows that it is biologically impossible for them to conceive. God's response is not one of punishment or guilt. The Lord only points out to Sarah that she doesn't believe him and God won't let her deny that fact. Also, let's read verse 15 in two different tones. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Or, Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Which tone seems most likely to you? What does your choice suggest about how you understand God's character and how God relates to humans? Now let's look at another account of a birth prophecy. In Luke 1, 11 to 10, Zechariah does not believe the angel Gabriel who tells him that Elizabeth will have a child when they know that it is biologically impossible for them to conceive. Gabriel responds to Zechariah's disbelief by preventing Zechariah from speaking until the prophecy comes true. Was Gabriel's actions a punishment? A sign of his authority? Something else? What do your conclusions tell you about how you think about God? Finally, in Luke 1, 26-38, Mary does not believe Gabriel when he tells her that she will have a child when she believes that it is biologically impossible for her to conceive. Gabriel responds to her confusion by explaining how the conception will happen. I said confusion. Do you think Mary was confused and the others were in disbelief? Were all three in disbelief? Were all three in confusion? Why did God respond to each of them differently? I want to make one more comment about the Sarah narrative. In this account, there's nothing to suggest that the Lord was upset that Sarah didn't believe him. All he did was not let her deny the fact of her doubt. Looking at these three narratives together leaves us with questions to which there is no clear answer. What we do see evidence of is that God responds to each person differently and that God does not explain why each person receives a different response. As a side note, here's an observation. God is a lot kinder to the woman questioning than God is to the man who is in a position of religious leadership. We can also think about the Shunammite woman in, um, in 2 Kings 16. She expresses confusion or disbelief over Elisha's prophecy that she would have a son. But in the narrative... Neither Elisha nor the narrator comment on her expression of doubt about Elisha's prophecy. There's something to think about here about how God treated these women and their questioning. Here's a closing question. When you think about how God responded differently to Sarah, Zechariah, and Mary and the Shumanite, Shunammite woman. What do you think about how God will respond to your doubts, questions, and confusion? What does your answer say about how you think about God's character and God's expectations of humans?